Hi all. So in this video, we're going to look at how to create or how to have a database hosted within Google Cloud's platform. This will allow you to have your database material available to you no matter where you are, as long as you have an internet connection. So here I'm already logged into Google Cloud platform. Um, and uh, and I've already uh, I've actually switched back over to my uh, to my databases spring 2019 project. If you haven't created a project yet or any of that, make sure to see my previous video about creating a project and associating it with a bill account billing account. Those are two things that you absolutely have to have done uh, before uh, before you can do this. So now that I have all this stuff set up, let me just go over here to the navigation menu and I'm going to scroll down to SQL. All right there it is i'll click sql um, and now we have the ability to uh, or the options to create an instance right so we'll just go ahead and create an instance um, instance is cloud speak for a a virtual server so i'll go ahead and click create instance and you'll notice we actually have a, we have two options here we can create a mysql database or postgres we're going to use mysql in this in this example and i'll go ahead and click next then it just gives us a couple of options we'll we'll use the second generation the recommended version go ahead and click that and then it asks for a an instance id right so basically you know just give it uh give it something meaningful for you so you know maybe uh, maybe i want to call it um GCP MySQL, right? Then in terms of the password, right? So uh, you'll it seems to default to showing you the password. So if you if you're uh, if you want to make sure that no one's uh, shoulder surfing you, uh, you'll want to uh, you'll want to make sure that uh, that the visibility is turned off. So I'm just going to set a uh, a quick password here for that. Um, and then in terms of the region, uh, this basically is the geographical region that is, uh, that is basically um, the particular data center for, uh, for Google Cloud Platform um, where, uh, where your stuff is hosted. Um, in our case, US East, which if I remember correctly, is in South Carolina, that's actually closest to, uh, to where we are here, in, uh, here in, um, in Tampa. So that's the one I'm going to select. Um, and at this point, realistically i could just uh, i could just go ahead and click create i'll just show you some of these other configuration options right so you see there are uh, there are a number of different options here but we don't really have to worry about those we're just going to go ahead with the uh, with the defaults for that um and so from that i'm just going to go ahead and click create Okay. So it says the instance is being created. Yes, I don't need to save that or anything. Um, and this could take a, a couple of minutes, uh, honestly. It's, um, it, it, is, it isn't necessarily the fastest process, um, the creation of the instance anyways. But nevertheless, we will need to, uh, we will need to wait for that. Um, at the same time, notice I do have dBeaver running, uh, the tool that we saw in the previous classes of how to install and all of that. Um, and again, if you found this on uh, online, I'll actually post a link uh, in the uh, in the show in the show information about where you can download dBeaver um, and all of that. All right, so instances being created again might take a few minutes. That's okay. And as I said, it took a couple of minutes. I kind of did a little through the, through the magic of video editing. I shortened that up a bit, but eventually, once uh, it should be, it should in fact be created. Now, once it's created, uh, there's still a couple of more steps that we need to do. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to come over here to connections. And here is where we need to tell Google Cloud Platform where we are going to allow people to connect from. Essentially, what IP addresses can connect to the database instance. It's essentially a little security measure, right? So what we need to do is under public IP here, we're going to come down to uh, to add network, and I'm going to click that. Um, and then it basically says uh, says give me a give it a name, right? So I'm just going to call it uh, my IP address, right? And then it asks for uh, for essentially the IP address in CIDR notation, right? So we need to know what you you need to know basically what your own IP address is. The easiest way of finding this out, go to uh, go to what's my IP, 
right? And, uh, and you'll get your particular IP address. Right now I'm actually logged in through USF's network, so I'm getting, a, uh, I'm getting an IP address um, within, uh, within there. So here's my IP address. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this, and I'm gonna come down here and paste that in. But since they require CIDR notation, uh, for the full IP address, I'm gonna put slash 32, just like so. Okay, and then I click done. Now you'll notice we can actually add additional networks and all that. And the reason that, that I bring this up and this is important is remember your IP address can change. So for instance, if you're logging in, uh, if you're trying to access your database from school, you're gonna be logging in from USF's network. So you'll have an IP address there. If you then go home and you're trying to log in, your IP address will be changed. So you will need to add um, additional networks and so forth. The other thing I wanna show you um, for USF students um, is that it's actually helpful to for us to just allow all of the IP addresses um, that come out of USF to be able to connect in. So that way it makes it a little easier, at least when you're on campus, um, or if you happen to be using VPN software to log on to, uh, log on to USF's network. So the way you would do that, uh, basically you're just going to do network. Um, here I'm going to call it USF, and uh, I'll come down here and paste this in. And essentially I'm just going to delete out the those uh, those last two numbers, changing those to 0.0, .0 and putting a slash 16 after this, right? So this is where uh, this is where uh, USF's IP addresses come from. Um, again, if you found this on online, found this on the internet or whatever, if you're going to a different school, uh, you're going to want to find out what the CIDR address is for where you most commonly uh, log in and all of that. So again, I can click done. There it is. You'll notice now I actually have two of those. Of course, very importantly, make sure that we save these things. Um, if not, uh, then uh, then the chat then those changes uh, won't actually uh, won't actually be applied. So we save it. That takes um, a short amount of time, but then it uh, then it actually will be uh, will be set up. Hopefully, we'll see that quickly ish. Right, there it is. Um, and you can see uh, you also have the ability. So, you know, if, if, for instance, let's say you're at Starbucks and you're connected to that, their network. So you add your IP address there and um, and then you're no longer at Starbucks. So you could come in and basically uh, basically just click the little garbage can to, uh, to delete any one of uh, those particular things. All right, so now our database is in fact up and running. Let's actually go to connect to it. So again, I've clicked on overview here and I'm gonna scroll down to uh, the public IP address, right? There's the IP address for, uh, for my particular database instance. So I'm going to click copy for that. And then I'm gonna come over to dBeaver. And just like we did in the past, uh, I'm gonna create a new database connection. So I'm just gonna right click here, say create a new connection. And then it's gonna ask me for uh, what database I'm connecting to, what RDBMS I'm connecting to. So it's MySQL. I will select that one and go ahead and click next. Then uh, we need to change the server host to the IP address that we just copied. So I'm just going to grab this and uh, go ahead and click paste and that's in there. The username is root. And then the password is well, whatever it is that you set the password to previously. Okay, so I've entered in uh, the credentials. Let's make sure that, uh, that I act in, can in fact connect. Okay. Um, again, if it's your first time using dBeaver or your first time using uh, connecting to a MySQL database, you will get the prompt for downloading driver files. So go ahead and just uh, click download and you should see success. So now I'll go ahead and click finish. There's my actual connection. Let me go ahead and just spin this open real quick. And we can see there's some databases and so forth. Again, I can go to SQL editor and create a new script. And then I can do things like uh, we did in class. So I could say create database first, like so. And again, if I come over to uh, databases here and I refresh that, uh, there's our database named first um, and so forth. So then you can actually use other SQL commands for interacting with this as well. Now, let's talk about a couple of other things, right? So general, uh, general server administration and so forth, right? So if you're gonna use this, this uh, 
this for storing all of your data, you decide you're not going to use XAMPP or whatever, and that's fine. Um, generally, what I recommend is you may not want to actually leave this running all the time. Um, I mean, in some senses, it's also a security issue. Um, again, dealing with, with the credits from the education grant, um, this also helps you to kind of not burn through your credits as quickly and all of that. If you burn through all of your credits, it's actually not that big of, a, of an issue. Google does have a mechanism that we can request additional credits for you and all of that. Um, you could just let me know. Um, but Basically, what I would suggest that you do is, you know, when you're done, so, so you've interacted with your database, you're done actually interacting with, uh, with that particular database. And so, um, let me just uh, disconnect there. Um, yeah, that's fine. Right. So um, once you're done with your database, um, but you know you want to keep that database around, you're going to interact with it later and so forth, uh, then you can click the stop button. Right. Alternatively, if you've created a database and you're just not planning on using that particular database instance anymore, you can actually throw it away altogether by uh, by clicking delete. Right. So, um, again, if you're going to kind of use one database connection, uh, one database instance throughout the semester, after you do your work, what I would say is, you know, go ahead and click stop. Let it actually stop uh, that particular instance. Right now. There's a couple of things that we that we do need to uh, that we do need to check here, right? So notice there it's saying yes, it uh, it it is stopped, um, and all of that started to allow connections and so forth, right? So I think it's still actually in the process of stopping. Yes, instances being updated. Um, again, might take a minute or so. Yes, and so it says the instance is stopped and all of that. So supposing that uh, supposing that then you logged out of Google Cloud Platform, you came back later. You want to uh, you want to actually um, now work with your database once again. So we can come back over to the uh, to the database itself, and we can click Start. Right. So it says okay, yes, start the op start the database and all of that, and then it's going to go through that. Now the main thing that I really was looking for is to see uh, is to see whether the public IP address has changed. Right. Um, I would imagine that uh, that the public IP address is not um, is not uh, locked to this, and so I do want to I do want to be careful about the fact that uh, that that actually um, hasn't changed. So I'm going to look here. It says 35 231 41 49. Let's go back over here. Yeah, it turns out it actually hasn't changed. Now, if you do find that the IP address of your instance has changed, uh, we should be able to uh, we should be able to go to Edit Connection, right? And then right here under Server Host, you could make whatever changes to uh, to reconnect to the appropriate uh, to the appropriate database. So. Hopefully that's helpful. Hopefully you get success and all of that. Um, we're going to do this in class. So, you know, if you have questions there, you can ask questions or you can hit us up on Piazza. Again, if you found this video on my YouTube channel and you have questions, just hit us up in the comments below.